Everybody, welcome to the Harp Effect on Friday afternoon in this January 2023. And we are today having a special guest that, in fact, we're going to end up with two special guests. We're so lucky. It's and a secret. Don't tell them the second one. Oh, okay. We can keep it a secret. You're getting ahead of us. Tyson Knight is here. Say hi to everybody, Tyson. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I I think maybe you've already figured out that perhaps he's an artist, (laughs) and and but he's not only an artist extraordinaire, but Tyson Knight has something that only you can gather from inside somehow. I look at his work and it's like I see probably many things that he hasn't a clue that I see <laughs> just because of that the way he lot. works. And and you do, well, Tyson, you do all kinds of art. I mean, like, I mean, it's like, yeah. is it oil? Is it pen and ink? Is it no? Um, you know, I just, I get inspired. And when I was younger, you know, I didn't have a lot of materials. So I would go in my mom's garage and, and dad's garage and grab whatever was there to create with. So. I've just fostered this uh, ability to use whatever oil, acrylics, whatever I could use and create artwork with. So I'm open to trying all different, you know, genres of art. I've, I've done fine art, pop art, street art. I've done a combination of the three. Um, yeah, I'm just... Not something you could be taught. You had to be able to garner that and digest that on your own. Yes. Can you imagine? It's what we call self Taught. Yeah. So, are you um, looking at this, or are you looking at the camera? So, <laughs> when you have know. limited resources, especially at a young age, you, you, especially as a child, you have like a really fascinating, fascinating imagination. So, um, I was able to hold on to that childlike part of me. Um, Picasso talks about that, um, and out of necessity comes genius. So, just you know, using all those stuff in my childhood and bringing it forward, and just and that was in New Jersey. That was in New Jersey. Yes. So mm-hmm. now you are in. The desert, as mm-hmm. you all know, and did I welcome you to the Harp Effect? Yeah, with Yo Reno and Marsha. Maybe. Uh, I just wanted to let you know <laughs> we're still here after like two and a half years. We're still at it, and mm-hmm. we feel so privileged and so grateful, and that you all tune in so that you get to meet our friends and our guests and people like Tyson, who absolutely his work has like fascinated me. Since I first saw him mm-hmm. at a, was it a small gallery? It was a small gallery. It was um, the Desert Art Center, um, which is a co-op gallery. Uh, it's downtown Palm Springs. And um, I had submitted some of my artwork to them back in 2017. And um, it's a jury. You get juried in. And I made it into the into that year, 2017. So that was my first time being displayed at a gallery in Palm Springs or in the Coachella Valley. You know? Yeah, so. That was a cool you know, so prior, accomplishment. Yeah. So kind of prior to that, you were kind of doing two jobs. I mean, you yeah. were, I met you originally mm-hmm. as a barber. Yeah, I was actually a barber. I came <laughs> here, I was actually a barber because I started out, you know, always as a child, I created art. Um, but, um, you know, at some point you got to pay the bills, right? And I had this other ability. I was always like, you know, blessed with my hands and the use of my hands. So I just got into barbering. So I thought, you know, you can be an artist. I can hold a clipper and I can create art on people's hair. So I can look at someone's hair and know exactly what it's going to look like before I even start it. I just know exactly how the finished product's going to look. So that's the same way I look at a blank canvas. Mm-hmm. I look at a blank canvas like, I already know what that's going to look like because I have the thought. So I just got to bring it into reality. And to me, that's magic. Yeah. If you can think something and then bring it into the physical world, that's the closest thing to magic you probably can get to. Isn't that incredible? I love it. I get so <laughs> fascinated. I just get I mm-hmm. wrapped up in what he's saying. Yeah. and and. Tyson, there there are things that about your work. Uh, you can go to his website, by the way, yes. and it's Tyson T Y S O N Knight. Mm-hmm. No, no, T Y S E N. Ah, okay, and K N I G H T. But if you saw our ad before that came yeah. on to tell us that we would tell everybody we would be here, well. There was information there, and as you well know, we'll give you information today, and tomorrow it'll be out again so that you can find and read all about Tyson and how you can, I mean, because the bottom line is not necessarily to purchase a 
but people will want to. Yeah. You know, I just think, you know, you know, buying my art is definitely um, something I would love people to do. But I think the most important thing is just to be inspired by my story, um, my journey. And, and when you look at the artwork, just see, you know, a part of you and, 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 and just be inspired by it. So I get more thrill out of and, and, and inspiration out of people just, you know, taking to the artwork and just admiring it, you know, and, and, and thinking, oh, you know what? He can do that. I can do that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, of course you got to pay your bills and do things of that nature. <laughs> right. So I, I think in, in that regard, I'm going to be taken care of. But I think the most important thing is to inspire others to whatever they're doing in life, to see what I'm doing and, and, and implement that in their own lives in some, some regard. So, so as a kid, like back in New Jersey, mm -hmm. when you were doing your art, did you have much um, pushback or were other kids like fascinated, you know, um, with what you were doing? Or? Well, well, I came up in a time where it was like, you know, in the, in the, in the mid nineties, right? So it was, internet wasn't a big thing. So, um, Creativity was a really huge thing for, for us as, as teenagers and kids, right? right? So um, I got to the point where I wouldn't even have any books in my book bag. I would just have T-shirts and jeans, and I would go home and airbrush them and use different markers. <laughs> and I would go back to school and sell kids. Um, it was, I think Bart Simpson was really popular back then. I think Mickey Mouse was really popular. So I was you know, going to school and taking commissions at a young age, and I also was creating business logos for, you know, small companies in New Jersey. So I've always knew that I had something special to offer in the art community. Um, it just took me some time to really put everything together and, you know, and make it something that I can, you know, use in my life going forward, you know, take care of myself. So. And that's where the hustle came yeah, in, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Then, <laughs> and then it's documentary. It's documentary. Yes, mm -hmm. well, somebody, I read on of it, mm -hmm. but I'm not quite sure how it came about. Um, well, uh, you know, I, like, like Rena was saying, I came out here, I started, I was barbering, cutting hair, and, you know, I was taking my artwork downtown Palm Springs and walk into all the galleries and no one would wanted to accept the art. And I was, one day I was home just, I got obsessed with watching like a lot of art documentaries. And I just got this really harebrained idea to create my <laughs> own documentary, right? So I had a little bit of um, background in uh, film because I used to do uh, modeling and um, acting in New York, you know, and a little bit in Los Angeles. So I had a, I, I knew what was going on, but I used, when I used to go on sets and, and play boyfriends to different musical artists or, you know, do small bit roles, I was more fascinated about what was going on behind the camera. So I was watching how they break the lens down, then they had an AD, then they had this person. I was like, wow, I think I can do that. So I just took that little bit of knowledge and you know, experience, and I said, you know what, I'm going to just, you know, uh, create my own documentary. And what I would do, I'd work all week and during the weekends for six months. Um, I would take those days off and just film. And I was able to hire um, this gentleman who was a, uh, he graduated from, I think, San Francisco Film School, but he was a, he was being a waiter downtown Palm Springs at a restaurant. And I told him, hey, I don't have a lot of money to pay you. I can pay you $100 a day. Can you help me with this? Wow. He said, yes, let's do it. And for six months, we just trekked around town and I uh, found other artists that wanted to be involved, and we just started building this thing from the ground up. Now, where can people see this documentary? Um, you can see it on my YouTube channel. So. Tyson Knight uh, YouTube channel, T-Y-S-E-N-K-N-I-G-H-T, YouTube. Just go to my YouTube or just Google me or something, it'll pop up. See? Yeah. You have the advantage out there of being able to, <laughs> or we do, to watch the this story and how it unfolded and how yeah. he felt that he knew he had something to inspire and to give to the world. And he's yeah. still, I mean, you're, you're still just a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, um, you're, you're, you're pretty learning. fortunate, you know. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, I understand that fully. And I, I don't, I don't take that for granted, you know, any, in any regard, because, um, you know, it's not every day that you, you're, you're fortunate enough to, you know, wake up every day and be the person you want to be in your life. So that's, that's something that's really, um, I feel real blessed about it. And I make sure that I, inspire people on a daily basis, you know, in any way I can to give back, you know, in that regard. So, so, so when you were filming the documentary, mm -hmm. I think, didn't you go out, out at night time sometimes? And it was yeah. kind of places that were a little, like, yeah. iffy, yeah. Yeah, you know, oh, like, story. what was that noise? Yeah, yeah, right? you know, it's a funny story. <laughs> um, my, my, my film guy at the time, the guy who was just doing the filming for me, I had this idea to go, you know, um, go graffiti a billboard, right? And he was so nervous. He was so nervous. He didn't, he didn't want any parts of this. Right. I said, look, 
He said, I don't think this is a good idea. I said, we have to get this shot. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, we have to get this shot. And he was like, oh, I don't know, man. I said, okay. I said, listen. I even went this far. I said, listen, if the cops pull up, I would tell them it's all me. That you had nothing to do with it. I'll take the whole rap for it. Then he felt more comfortable. Now, do I know that really would have been a thing? <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> right? Like, I can't tell the cops what to do, but I would have said, hey, he has nothing to do with it. But, you know, but it worked out. And, 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 and thankfully, um, we was able to get the shot. And it was a part of the documentary. So, um, yeah. So. Is that documentary... A bit, like I know that you're connected somewhat with the film festival here. Mm -hmm. AM Docs, yeah, AM Doc, AM Docs. It's called AM Docs Documentary Film Festival. Yes, oh, I, yeah, I've, I've screened with them twice in eighteen and nineteen. Yeah. Oh, that's... and you've gotten numerous awards. I saw. Yes, yeah, so I've yeah. won. You know, I've uh, you know it's it's gotten some notoriety. You know, it's something that you know it's it's fascinating to me how you could you know have an idea right in your mind and 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 get that idea out in the world and and people notice it and, and you can win awards just for something I was just thinking about just laying in the bed and uh, bringing it into uh, fruition and traveling to France I traveled to France for this film uh, my, my film was shown to a French a French audience um, I've won the Oregon Documentary Film Festival uh, award for the whole film festival um, it spawned my next documentary which was Homeless Street Artist Documentary that won the Reno Del Rey Film Festival uh, Award well, if they go to, I mean, this is incredible. And so if the audience wants to see this and they go to, they just go to your name on YouTube. Just go to, and yeah, they, just type in, you know, yeah, I have, a, I have tons of uh, content there. So you can find the films there. I have them in long versions and short versions too as well. So, Well, we also have been introduced to your, she said, assistant. Ooh, but I had another question. You have another question first, yeah. and then okay, Gail, stay there. Don't leave the wings. Um, I know you were talking about. Uh, I saw where you started a scholarship. You know, because you're talking, you're going, you know, about I think connect to the inner child. Mm -hmm. You talked about that, yeah. and I see where that inner child in you, and mm -hmm. now you reach out to other kids and mm -hmm. inspire them. How, how's that reception been with the kids? I mean, are they like, you got to come back, Mr. Tyson? Yeah, you know, it's um, that's really an amazing journey and opportunity because a lot of the kids want to follow me on social media, but I kind of try to, you know, you know, I don't, they'll follow me, I just don't follow them back, but they, they get inspired and they see me like, why don't you follow me back on social media? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Um, but the kids are very inspired. I mean, I, I think children, especially young children, they're very... Um, open to creativity oh yeah you know and and the way i set things up is how i i do my sessions with them is i'll i'll i will um, draw out and sketch out the image okay so every kid gets the same exact image and the reason i do that is because i don't want any kid to get discouraged because all the kids have different art level skills so I don't want a kid to be like, oh, mine sucks, or, you know, so, but sure. I give everybody the same thing, and they add the color. So it's just a, a unique, unique way um, that kids build confidence, right? you know, through the art and just being creative. And it's been studies shown that, you know, when you, even if you doodle, it just helps to, so much with clear thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was a kind of an artist when I was a kid and mm -hmm. got a lot of praise. And yeah. So that, yeah. it was inspiring. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. very inspiring. Yeah. You know, yeah. Knowing that you made yeah. something like your film or your paintings yeah. and people are like, oh my God. You yeah. Know, yeah. Think that <laughs> Where are they today? <laughs> They're my, t actually, I still have my toy box. <laughs> <laughs> I have a toy box with my old pictures in it. You know, it's funny when you look back at, you know, it's um, when you look like if you go to, if you were to go look at that artwork you did as a child, there's going to be something special there that at some point you were in a special place in your mind when you created that that artwork and it's gonna, it could bring you right back to that place. It's some really cool nostalgia, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's why, you know, even though I got rid of some stuff, there's like, Ah oh, man, I can't get rid of it. I did this in the third grade. I did this in the yeah. eighth grade, and it's special. It's you know, it's, it'll never be duplicated again. It was a, a, a point in history. I mean, it's you know, a lot of my um, my parents have all of my like old you know artwork from like 1990. Wow, know, um, wow. just stuff that I've done over the years. And they, I, I have to claw it out of their hands at this point. But... <laughs> no, no, no. We got some, we got some bucks here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna hold on to these just in case you know. Eat. This is vintage. Well, well, let's bring Gail Fitzgerald aboard here, who happens to be your assistant. Now, 
in just a little bit that I have spoken, this is Gail, everybody. Hi. And, and yes, yeah, scoot yourself in so the whole world can have just a little bit of your persona and inspiration and Oh my gosh, I walked in the door tonight not expecting this lovely individual to be here. <laughs> I, I stood there in amazement thinking, I've met her, I've met her. And I think, I just think I've met her because she's just so in rapturing. You know, it's like, it's incredible to me. And so, wow. well, no, I, I, be, you know why? Because she, obviously birds of a feather flock together. And I just knew that she probably, the two of you inspire one another. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what would you, 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 well, you told me just in, I have had five minutes with Gail, <laughs> that she is a, an author yes. and a filmmaker. Yes. And the reason I wanted you to meet Gail is because she just, had a book? It, is it published today? It, Went to it the. It was just. It's just released on Apple Books yesterday. Wow. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. it'll be on Amazon later this month. And the name of the book. The name of the book is Winter in the Desert, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a children's book for ages three and up, and it's based on my dog Winter, okay, and her journey to find everlasting love. <laughs> and I wrote the script about 10 years ago. And then I went, six months ago, I went to rewrite it and to make it current. And I decided, let's make a children's book out of it. Nice. So I took me, I quit my job and, uh, <laughs> and wrote for four months. And uh, now I'm going to use it as a marketing tool to market it so I can make the film. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's oh. all about the childlike mentality of not being afraid to take that leap. Yes, it's an inspirational children's book that teaches children based on Buddhist theories of never give up, mm -hmm. uh, hope, courage, and confidence to win in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's needed more than ever for kids. Yes, and, absolutely. You know, when I was growing up, I was very fortunate. I was raised by very strong females, grandmas, mm -hmm. aunts, my mm -hmm. mom. I mean, some mm -hmm. of my, they're only this tall. Mm -hmm. But they Power. have that inspiration yes. that you can do anything and they always lift yes. you up. And obviously you two do that with kids too. Oh, it's yeah. not, it's a hand up, not pushing them down. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I feel it's a gift. And, and the same thing like when I'm teaching or performing, mm -hmm. if somebody is inspired by any part of what I do, Excellent. I, I feel it's a gift that has been given to me uh, from God because that's what I'm about. And that's, it's like the two of you together. I mean, it's like the energy in the room is like <laughs> swirling and swelling. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and of course, those of you who uh, will be people from Barnesville, Ohio, tuning in <laughs> my beginnings. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. Cool. And we've had people are, I have friends in Switzerland. She has friends oh, in nice. France and nice. Germany. Nice. Yes. So. And, 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 you, they'll make comments, and or later on the playback, it'll come up. We were watching today, and we loved it. And that's why we try to get information out to the world where they can see, feel, touch, buy mm -hmm. your inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I call it more inspiration than art yeah. because it, yeah. it comes from inside them. Well, so does the art. <laughs> anyway, I, I want... I want first of all I want to make sure that the winter in in, in the desert winter in the, in the desert and it's a children's book but for three yeah. years and up yes. that means I I can you read can it you can read it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what do you mom, what do you say your mom says about good things she gave you dancing lessons because oh. <laughs> you, my mother always would say thank goodness we gave you dancing lessons <laughs> because at least your feet work because your head sure doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But we know it does. Yes, definitely. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it does. And I get to use, I get, you know, on a day like today with a little rain, it's all cleared mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And so, Reno, you had so many notes that you wanted to ask. Well, it, I, I was always inspired by Tyson, you know, even as a barber, because I'd be, I had mm -hmm. another barber at the same place, mm -hmm. and, but I'd be like watching Tyson and I'd see some of the before and afters that you did. Mm -hmm. And when you told me you were an artist, mm -hmm. and then I found out about your documentary, I'm like, man, this guy. Hustles. Yeah. Uh, I, I admire that about him. Thank you. 
Yeah, but I, well, so the metamorphosis of my hair, my viewing audience has been with me all along. And so, no, he didn't do it. But, but yeah, I bet you I'm going to pick his brain, <laughs> pick his inspiration and in art. <laughs> you know, can look, Reno, we need to, you need well, to take know, the I, I want You to have say, another question? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, I know you've done a lot of artwork in throughout Palm Springs. Mm-hmm. You were commissioned to do the benches yeah. and other. Uh, other areas, I mean, mm-hmm. even murals, right, on yeah. the walls and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just don't go and psh, do what you want, right? People no, actually no, yeah, call no, you no, to yeah, say, yeah. Yeah. Don't fix this up, mm-hmm. trick it yeah. out. Mm-hmm. So um, how many benches are you up to now? I think we, uh, we've we passed, I don't have an exact number, but I'll say at least 40 to 50, I think. Um, oh, did you do what? Benches. He painted the benches. Oh, the benches. I, yeah. I saw him there one day. Yeah. They had a little tarp up, and it was like yeah. 110 to, degrees. To tell, tell, yeah. tell what the benches are that we're talking about. The benches in Palm Springs. Well, I know, but people in Switzerland and Barnesville, Ohio, don't well, know Well, they can go to the side. website and <laughs> see the benches. Do you have some? Yeah, you know, let me go, get the, let me go grab the... Uh, the pictures. I have an actual thing. Oh, no. okay, yeah. okay. okay. And then we're, uh, Reno's going to take it around. But okay. yes, no. he does these benches. In He's not going to bring the bench in here. He's going to bring a picture of a bench. <laughs> well, don't, I wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me at all. So, uh, Reno, this yes. is exciting because the other day we were downtown Palm Springs, and you said that's one of Tyson's benches. Yeah. So Ooh. This is the actual. Uh, this is my logo, actually. Yeah, this is what I want to ask about. What What is that? Where's the benches? This is the bench one right there. Well, see, we, yeah. Okay. All right. That's I've been closed out before. Uh, I don't want to close you out. I but I don't mind with the art of benches of Palm go. Springs. What they do is they have there benches, you and That's you said idea. somewhere we're around fifty. Yeah. That are so it's a, um, how many is here? It's, it's about, it's a, all of these are di- done by different artists, right? So basically, the ones that I've done, I started this project. So let me give you a backstory, right? So in 2018, I was approached by uh, the Palm Springs Art Commission. Real cool gentleman named Russell Pitchart. He uh, saw my documentary at the AM Docs Film Festival and said, I'm going to get this guy to do this test pilot project. Because I think back in 2018, the city were going to replace all of these benches with the trash cans. And it was going to cost about maybe um, half a million dollars to do it. Ah. So the commission had this really bright idea to actually pay artists to paint them and just, you know, revive them. So they they tapped me to do the test pilot. They said, "Okay, you know what? We'll do it. Let's get an, let's get an artist. Let's see if he can pull it off. And if it if it stands up and if people like it and the community gets behind it, then we'll green light the rest of them." So I was the one that spearheaded this project and was able to get other artists um, commissions and, and benches. Yeah. Some of you watching, I know what you're saying. Oh. I sat in that bench, <laughs> and I sat in that one up there. And for those of you who ha- are, are going to be downtown Palm Springs, like today or tomorrow or whatever, look for the benches. You'll They're easy all. to find, yeah. and take a little break and sit in Tyson's bench. And you, know what's, you know what's amazing about this project? I've, I've scoured the Internet, and I, we are the only city that's done a project like this. Wow. So it's you know it's really history making and it's just a really fascinating, a well, really beautified uh, yeah. downtown. When you're driving down mm-hmm. the main strip, mm-hmm. you're like there's one, there's one, there's mm-hmm. they pop. They're That's not right. just the, what were they, what color were they before? Brown? They were like a brownish, like a brownish color, like to to, to match the um, the backdrop of the mountains. Um, you know, it's and what the pandemic actually spearheaded to go ahead and greenlight them and get other artists to paint. So it was it was it. it it had two things going for it. It was inspiring the community, and it was hiring artists in a time that people were really hurting for money because of the pandemic. So sure. it just had this really beautiful impact, you know, all around. So and, did you and, did you two know each other then? Oh yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. I, I just this is I, I'm so as yeah. you know I'm excited because anything that has to do with art, inspiration. People wanting to inspire others, because you always know when I'm telling you, when did you give up your piano play? And when did you give up your art? When did you stop singing? When did you stop dancing? When did, when you, did stop... you give up your paintbrush? Yeah. <laughs> you know, any of those things. And nearly every show I do, I advocate that because that's where, you know, it, it's like people like you who can inspire and tell people, 
it's never too late. Mm -hmm. You know, may, you may not. Well, you just might achieve this level, but never you better never know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it's you know you connect to the source, and then you you know you 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 know it's funny because when I paint, um, that's how you know you're really in rhythm, right, with the universe is because once you start creating, you lose space and time. Yep. That means that you're at it. You're in a higher. You're you're somewhere higher within the, within the realm where you're creating, and you look up. It's like damn, it's five o'clock. I started at. You know, well, <laughs> where did five hours go? Yeah, yes. right. right. Yes. You know, it's I even know been times one. when I would paint for a long time, I would leave out to go, you know, we got to do life stuff, right? You can't just stay in this place forever, <laughs> right? You got to snap out and get back into reality, right? So I would go like to the grocery store and come back and then I'll come back like, damn, I painted that? Ah. I I understand. <laughs> do you, wow. you know that energy? Yes. yes. Like, yes. damn, did I, I created that? Mm -hmm. It's this like really, you know, fascinating, um, you know, space to be in. It is that you it, created this thing. Because even when I do the little ad, like yeah. the little promo ad I did for you, I mean, it's just a little thing. But then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. three hours went by, and I go, "I spent three hours on this." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, and then she's like yeah. trying yeah. to ask me stuff, and I'm like, Pfft. and then I I mean, yeah. snapped out of the yeah. the flow, mm -hmm. and then I got to get what mm -hmm. did I just do? Mm -hmm. And so now she leaves me alone when I'm doing it, and I get all bug eyed and like doing this, you know. <laughs> so you it's a special way to zone. connect, you know. You connect to that higher source, and you're just really in that energy. You're immersed in it, and yeah. it's like a runner's high. It's, it's a fascinating. It's like a runner's high. But when high. I'm working on my show, which is going to be on January the 22nd at the Arthur Newman Theater in Palm Desert, Beautiful. you know, at uh, housed in the Jocelyn Center, there'll be times when he does the same thing to me, you know, and and and. You Can we try? eat now? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and and it, it's like, but it's wonderful when you know you can surround yourself mm -hmm. with others creative yes. you know endeavors trying to make this world mm -hmm. a better place yes well that was the big thing about when we started the whole uh harp effect show it was like you know talking to people that inspire entrepreneurs people that quit one thing and, and started something else mm -hmm. all because they felt it yeah. they weren't afraid they had that childlike imagination mm -hmm. to go ahead and mm -hmm. do it yeah. and it didn't matter if they opened up a little restaurant, a gym, art. It took it still took courage yeah. to take that leap of faith. Like you, you're a perfect example, Gail. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Quit your job to write this book, and then see quit your book. job and to write the book, mm -hmm. and 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 then you you're going to do the film. Correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot it here, all the way from. Desert Hot Springs is going to start all the way down to Indio and back up to Desert Hot Springs. Wow. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. it. I love Absolutely. it. Oh, that's well, we have We have another guest just really. when she gets it. When we see the book. We'll have yeah, we have another have guest. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And then Absolutely. you can drag along. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make him the special guest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Switch <rope. laughs> so, um I, I did, you know, there was one of the quotes that you, mm -hmm. and, I, and I shared it on the mm -hmm. ad, and mm -hmm. hopefully I do it justice, but you, you said, there's no real concrete way to mm -hmm. be successful. Mm -hmm. There's no A to Z. Mm -hmm. There's no mathematical or alphabetical way of getting there. Just be inspired. Yes. Tyson Knight. I yes. thought that is like the icing on the cake. Yes. Yeah, he, he definitely, when he when he saw that and wrote it and, mm -hmm. and said, you know, this is, you know, Tyson said this and and I, it, 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 it stops you in your tracks mm -hmm. and makes you that. think. Am I doing that? Am I living up to my own ability to inspire? Am mm -hmm. I living up to my own? And and who do, who should it matter to? So yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. right. Because mm -hmm. people right. will feel it when you feel good about yourself; they want to be around you. That's, mm -hmm. But if you're I, like I, doubting I Thomas, <laughs> the logo picture. Yeah. What happened? I, I don't. I, even when I watched it on the website, I said mm -hmm. to myself. Hmm, what is this? You're trying to understand the significance. I was trying to understand okay. the significance. Let me see, let me bring it up here. Now be careful, you, you guys, about it. don't putting oh, that in front of the microphone. <gasps> All right, so basically, um, I, paste, I posted on Facebook. This is a picture of me um, when I really started to feel confident in my, my abilities as an artist, as a child. So this picture is actually on my Facebook. 
right? And then I have some of my child drawings um, there. This is actually a picture of me then, and I just digitized it. And I put the red and blue glasses, you know, to represent, um, I was born in the 70s, I was born in 76. So this represents when um, you would go to the movie theaters and 3D was like the most oh. magical thing. <laughs> it was the most magical thing you ever seen. I know, right? I know. Like that was like, <laughs> nowadays, I mean, you got HD and all these different things. But back then, like just, just to see something pop off the screen was, for me as a child, was just like next level. Mm -hmm. So um, now they, now they, they, they don't even make these are so retro now. Now it's just like all the glasses now look like Ray Bans now, right? Like yeah. <laughs> these Wayfarers, right? <laughs> so and that's just a representation, a representation of that in my life and how I see things, and and and, and I always pull from the past, you know, a little bit of nostalgia in my artwork, um, things from my past. So that that represents all of that in this logo, and just me, the red and blue. And um, yeah, it just represents um, and that haircut too. Got that ardent, line on the haircut. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, ardent retrospective thoughts. That means a very eager look back at things and bringing those thoughts into the present and create and putting those on canvas. Wow. I just believe, like I've I've been able to understand um, on a, on a different level that to advance you have to be uncomfortable. You can't advance yep. being comfortable. Yep. Yep. So I had to make myself uncomfortable to advance and then that's where like you figure out ways to make things happen mm -hmm. right oh wow the and secret of to... the advancing man I remember was to be uncomfortable when i first got in real estate everybody said oh you gotta go door knocking mm -hmm. door knocking mm -hmm. i'm like what do you do mm -hmm. and i kind of had a a little yeah. clue but no clue mm -hmm. and i remember going out park and i left I went out and parked again, got out of my car, got back in, and I left. I couldn't do it. I think it took four tries. And mm. finally, on the fourth one, I knocked on like four doors. Mm. Then there was a barking dog, and I left again. <laughs> so I gave five tries, but it's that yeah. whole comfort. Once you get yeah. past you it, I mean, get past that. things open up yeah. for you. Absolutely. And people thought I was an expert, and I said, no, I'm not nice. an expert. I was just brave enough to do it. Yes, <laughs> and and then he takes. met some wonderful people who have become our friends. Mm -hmm. You from know, door knocking. people from mm -hmm. just door knocking. Never yeah. sold them a house, nothing like that. We just connected, yep. and We're, we've been friends like some of them five years now. Well, if, oh, that's, oh, God. isn't this fun? I love this because I'm now going to be able to be, I, I'm, I'm using him. I'm taking some of his, in, his inspiration. <laughs> I'm taking it down because I need it right now. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, if there was something that any of you would want to tell the world, because the one thing about the Facebook Live is it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so if there was something you wanted to say that you... Like a closing comment? Like a closing comment, <laughs> yeah. Not an ending close. Not an end. Well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let Gail, Gail start <laughs> off. Well, I want to say the reason why I wrote my book is because I wanted to really inspire young people to never give up. Okay? And that winter always turns to spring. So no matter what you're going through, you know, there may be a wall. You'll figure a way to go over it, around it, underneath it, through it. Just get through it. And you're going to win no matter what. Spring is just around the corner. You know, did you hear that line that she said? My last show that I did mm -hmm. was titled, Have You Given Up This Time? Wow. <laughs> so I can't wait to read your book because I know there's a lot in there for me. And I know you don't believe it, but I am over three years old. Okay. <laughs> So you don't have to cart. Me. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's like this when she teaches her fitness class. You're in pain, and she'll say some off the wall, and you're trying to laugh, and you're hurting. Yeah, I want to join. I, okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So, Tyson, um, you know, I just want to, you know, this is what I've learned in my in my own life. This is my human revolution. Um, when you're pursuing anything in life, always look inward, never outward. Um, because if you look inward, everything outward will be a byproduct of what's, what comes out from you inside. So that's how you create your life. So you don't use outward things to define you. Everything's defined inward. And everything outside of that is a, out, outward is a byproduct of that inward ability to manifest things in your life.
We got to get him in front of more kids. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. In front of more people. Mm-hmm. More people, kids, adults, I mean, that, that have lost the child within them, you know, that, that, that mm-hmm. used to be. And I, I just I can't express enough how much the world needs all of us to like come together and really start mm-hmm. being more kind, more loving, more inspiring, more humble. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And we don't have to agree with each other on mm-hmm. everything, but it just it 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 always just makes me feel that I'm the ring leader and somehow I have to go out there and, and march, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, just be the example. Right? Yeah, you know, just be, yeah, just, you know, let, let, let your life be um, an example of, of, of greatness, you know, and then other people can see that because you can tell someone something, right? Like, you know, you should do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> But if they, they see you doing it and they can feel that energy right. and, 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 and somehow connect to that, you've, you've done your job. Yeah. You've done your job. You've done your job. Because I'm sure when you walk into a room, people are like, who is that? They, that's like, there's something like, I want to know this guy, you know, because you, you go from within and it comes out and people feel it. I'm sure they feel it with you too, Gail. Well, you know, when I, when I walk into a room, I like to... Maybe people feel, you know, um, heard and appreciated. You right. know? So I never leave with what I do or things of that nature. I always like to listen to other people and, 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 and take interest in what they're doing. Sure. Because people, so many people are not heard, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's um, everybody can talk and talk and talk, right? So I like to listen to people, hey, what do you, you know, what do you do? And then let people, and people get excited, like, oh, I do X, Y, Z. And then if they ask me, then I'll go into a story about what I do. But sure. I always like to let people be themselves and feel comfortable um, being who they need to be. Yeah. And hopefully they can be even but greater the next day, you know. And then I learned something from that, from listening. Yep. You know, and um, it helps me uh, gain more empathy and understanding. So Empathy. That's a great word. Well, everybody, I think, okay, don't forget to go to Tyson Knight uh, YouTube, yeah. and we'll have more info on that tomorrow. Yes. And Gail Fitzgerald, yes. your book is is it going? When will it be available on Amazon? Um, but the end of this month, but it's At, available on Apple Books right now. Apple. Oh, on Apple Books mm-hmm. right now, and mm-hmm. it's called Winter in the Desert. Yes, yes. for three year olds and above. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. You know how I feel at the end of every one of these shows. I don't like to, I don't want to let go. I don't want to yeah, yeah. let go. But <laughs> let me leave you with my saying that may everything that has been reduced to noise in you become music again. Mm. Yes, and beautiful. Friendship and music and art has no distance. Thank you all for being here and joining in. Thank you guys.